Before we could start the cool exploitation phase, we have to first define a couple things. So we're going to quickly define different shell types we're going to see, and then we're going to define different types of payloads we're going to see. So let's first start with the shells. The most common shell you're going to see is what is called a reverse shell. Now in this example, it is using a tool called Netcat, which you're going to see here shortly. And a shell, all a shell is, is access to a machine. So when we say we pop a shell, that means we get access to a machine. Now a reverse shell. A reverse shell means that a victim connects to us. Here you see it says target connecting to attack box. And you may get asked this question about shells in an interview. What is a reverse shell? What is a bind shell? So a reverse shell means, again, a victim connects to us. You see that it says target is connecting, attack box is listening. So what's happening here is that on the attack box, you can see that we have netcat. This is NC. And we're just listening uh, on a port here. LVP means listening verbose port. So we're listening on port 4444. That means on our machine, we're opening up that port when we use netcat. On this machine, it's going to say, hey, netcat, I want to connect to this IP address here. I want to connect to it on port 4444. And when I do that, I'm going to establish this bin shell here. So I'm going to execute bin shell, which is a Linux machine. If this was Windows, then it would be command.exe. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, let's connect over here, and this is going to connect. So all we're going to do with reverse shell is we're going to listen. Now, with the bind shell, a little bit different. We have our attack box and then our target. So with the bind shell, we actually open up a port on the machine, then we connect to it. So we fire off an exploit, that exploit goes in and it opens up a port and then it's listening for us to connect. When we connect on that specific port to that specific machine with Netcat, then we're gonna go ahead and get that shell, and on this side, it's gonna execute for us that bin sh. Now, if we go back, same thing here. We're going to send some sort of exploit that's going to talk back and say, hey, I want to, when you exploit this, go ahead and just connect to 4444 on this machine. Now, this is going to, come together very clearly when we get into our exploit development part here in just a little bit. But all you need to know right now is that a reverse shell means the target connects back to us. A bind shell means we connect to the target. Now a little bit more about reverse shells. You're going to use reverse shells 95% of the time. There are instances where you're going to use bind shells. Bind shells most likely are going to be on an external assessment. If you think about it, a reverse shell, you're sitting in your home network and you are sitting on a VM and that VM is using an internal IP address. It's talking out through NAT. It's going through your public IP address and you're attacking a target. Well, how are you going to connect that public IP address of the target back to yourself on an internal IP? You're going to have to set a port forward or a port trigger on your firewall to talk into that specific machine. It's a little bit of extra work. You're opening some stuff up on your side. The other idea is to say, hey, bind shell, why don't I just go ahead and open a port up on that target? I'll nap my way through on my public IP address and I'll just connect to that port. It doesn't care what IP address you're coming from. You see, it's just listening. So we can come from any IP address and connect to that port on that machine. So this is where bind shells are useful when we have to bypass some sort of firewall or it just makes sense. Sometimes a reverse shell just doesn't work and we have to use a bind shell anyway. So we have to think about the connection and how it's getting to and from us most of the time, especially because you're gonna practice a lot in labs and you're gonna do internal assessments as well. Most of your shells are gonna come in the form of reverse shell. However, bind shells do exist and you should know what they are as well. And again, for an interview, you should know the difference. So before we finish here, Let's go ahead and take a look at what these look like. And I'm going to log back into my machine. And I've got two things open here. I've got one and two. We're going to play victim and we're going to play uh, target, right? Or attacker. So on the attacker, if we have a reverse shell, we're just going to say netcat, I want to listen. And I like to do NVLP 
but you can do uh, LVP as well, VLP, it doesn't matter what order. I just do the MVLP and all fours. So now we're listening on any on all fours, right? So here we're gonna say on the victim screen, we're gonna say, hey, Netcat, I wanna connect, and this is a self connection, but still, I wanna connect to the victim machine or I wanna connect to my attacker from the victim machine and our attacker's IP address is 139. They've got 4444 open. Let's establish that connection. And we're gonna offer them bin bash when we do. And here's that connection. So this is a reverse shell. We were listening as the attacker and then the victim connected to us. And then we could say something like, who am I? And you could see root and then host name, Cali. And we have a connection and we offered up that bin bash here. So that works. So that is an example of a reverse shell. So I'm gonna control C this connection, kill it. It dies over here. Now, let's say we wanted to flip the script and we want to bind shell. Well, now guess who needs to be listening? Now in this instance, we're gonna be listening and we're gonna be offering up the bin bash because we are the victim. Okay, so we still have to offer up whatever command line we are going to have here. Now, all we have to do as the attacker is connect to our victim. And we have the same connection. You see the connection happens here. Who am I? Root, hostname, Cali. So that is the difference between a bind shell and a reverse shell. Remember, reverse shells are most commonly used, but bind shells are important. Again, just to hammer it home, Reverse shell means a victim connects to us. Bind shell means we connect to a victim. So I'll catch you over in the next video when we talk about stage versus non-stage payloads.